오버젤러스 브레인의 트루 버라이어티 YouTube, what's up? Have you seen the house? In the, in the garage, sorry. Um, right. So, <laughs> last time we showed you the other side, and I think I got to where I got to this point before uh, the camera died. So, so we got this side, and we're about to put this piece in here. Uh, rivet it in, drill these out, rivet it in. Um, well, before that, we're gonna make sure this hole is big enough uh, so you can't notice it uh, in here. And then put some epoxy around it. And yeah, then we'll rivet it in, drill out, rivet it in. Just like that. maker around the edges here so we get it rusting or we also don't see any of the white accidentally poked a hole in the side so I guess we're gonna squeeze it out of there and Alright, now that the silicone process is done, it's time to rivet on the vent. Put this uh, first rivet in and we'll do some more measurements to see. 
see if we can get a little closer. And to do the rivet, you just put in the, the tool here, and here it is, and you put it in the tool like this, and you squeeze this handle, and it squishes it down, and uh, bind, presses things together. This vent relieves pressure from inside the fender. And let's look at what all the vents look like all together. Those vents relieve pressure from under the hood. different look a lot of the guys on my Facebook group um, and actually the the company I bought these from they use this one I might have said it in an early video but they use this one for up here um, and also you know the other one for over here and then so you have five on the top so you get a lot of ventilation and then they build a uh, fender vent that I, I believe it covers like here and up to like here and it, it covers a good amount but I thought I thought it was just a little bit too big um, I didn't think it was gonna fit with the fender flares uh, so I decided to get the five pack and throw the ones up here uh, on the sides here and I think it looks pretty good it's got that kind of like like it's a it's a different type of shape, like out of nowhere, and it doesn't look bad. It's a shark fin look. Thanks YouTube. Just got the vents in. Uh, next, we'll probably tackle the um, the ducting system, or maybe just um, maybe just mount up the intercooler. Yeah, maybe just mount it up for now. And then we'll work on a ducting system later. I'm not sure if I want to make it out of fiberglass, if I want to make it out of aluminum. I could make it out of steel. I mean, I have the material to do it, but it would be heavy, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, talk to you later. Hello, YouTube. Chris here. About to get this O2 sensor hooked up, um, and we're gonna hook it up to the um, air fuel ratio gauge that we have to mount up inside the car. First, we're gonna get this wire hanger uh, through the firewall here, uh, through a little hole that the AC unit uh, the piping was uh, going through the firewall. Uh, we'll run this hanger wire down there until it gets on the inside uh, underneath the dash. And that way we can take the wires to either side and, and pull them through.
Okay, now that the wire, or the, yeah, the wire hangers are going all the way through. I to feed these two wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to electrical tape this to this and pull it through slowly. Um, it's such an odd shape, I'm going to put a lot of electrical tape on it and try to make it easier to penetrate through with the electrical tape. I'll show you guys what I mean in a second. So yeah, so I made it like like this so we can ease through better. I'm not sure if it's gonna fit through that hole down there. But we are gonna find out slowly but surely. ratio gauge uh, to the wiring harness. This is where it goes, right here. Yeah, this is where it, it talks to the computer. Um, the air fuel ratio gauge is connected to this wideband O2 sensor. And you'll see in the inside where the air fuel ratio gauge is. We need to Connect the wire to from the wiring harness to the gauge. So that's what we're doing right now. We got this wire going to the air fuel ratio gauge. About to connect it to the wiring harness here. Guys, um, I put some JB Weld on the bung that we drilled and tapped into the oil pan right here, and it dried uh, for about two days, I believe. Um, now we gotta <laughs> bless you. Um, now we have to go ahead and hook up the the lines with some thread sealant. To do that we have to take apart some of this charge piping straight here. So I'm gonna take my chances with that part. Um, we open up this thread sealer.
the bottom one I got really good inside, but this top one, I definitely feel like uh, I can use a, a little tightening up. Found a crazy way to tighten it. And to get in it like, you know, like this. <laughs> got under it. I think I got it as tight as possible. <laughs> Just like everything you said, I don't even know, right? <laughs> I tried not to laugh at first, you were like, <laughs> you were like, and then you just finished off with, I got under it. <laughs> so I was just like, that's the first line. <laughs> I know, continue, my man. Right. Uh, yeah, that's too funny. funny, that's too funny. He said, I got under it. <laughs> Put a little dip in it, look. <laughs> Alright, let me check it with my hand. Give it the hand test. See if it's uh this is very tight. Let's see how I'm gonna do it. So I gotta run it without the fluids. Uh, run it so the fluids get pumped through. And then right here. This is the oil feed line for the turbo. What I gotta do is pour some oil in here. Pour some oil in here to try to lubricate the uh, turbo a little bit. You know? Um, and then run the, <coughs> run the motor, turn the motor over with the key uh, until oil comes out of here. Put a little glass like right here so it catches it. And oil should come out of here and when oil will start coming, coming out of there, uh, then we can clean it up. Um, put the dirt sealer on it, uh, put it all together, wait a few hours to dry. Turbo me out of gas. We're not finished, we still got some stuff to do. Oh shit. She sounds good though. I don't know if it sounds good. <laughs> Stuff that needs to be burnt off. Oh, that's the actual exhaust, too. All right, so it turned on, and uh, I gotta make some adjustments real quick, guys, and then we're gonna turn it back on. She sounds crazy. <laughs> Thank you. 
going and she sound crazy. <laughs> So it turned on and uh, I got to make some adjustments real quick, guys, and then we're going to turn it back on. from here and that's my fault I didn't tighten it before I installed it um, and that's the only leak I can I can see so far and yeah so pretty much the next step is to uh, make sure our uh, the data that we plugged into the ECU is correct um, start tuning it do a, a test and tune basically just drive it around and let the ECU do its thing and tune it from there, a little street tune. Uh, I might take it to a professional to get it professionally tuned, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, and uh, we're also gonna jump on the body next. We have uh, the fender flares hardware coming in. Uh, that should be here within a week. So expect some videos on that, fender flares. There, we'll probably jump on the body as long as the motor is running good and running safe and running fun. Uh, I'm not really looking for any high horsepower, I'm looking for maybe 175 to 200 horsepower, uh, you know, which is no big deal. But yeah, I just want it to be fun and reliable and safe. And uh, yeah, got some other stuff that, that we got planned along the way, and stay tuned to find out what that is. <laughs> 